Wow. The McLaren 750S, an evolution of the 720S, sits a little bit below the 765 MP, though the idea the designers had was to make this car a little bit more accessible. Put simply, the 720S was a phenomenal machine, one which arguably didn't need to be improved upon. It had 710 horsepower and brain rearrangingly comprehensive steering, suspension and brakes. However, when it came time for McLaren to put a bow on it, they happily obliged by pulling 176 pounds of mass from the original car, strapping on a few bits from the McLaren Senna and jacking the price way up. The resulting 765 long tail now had 755 horsepower and weighed in at just 3,093 pounds. It was technically an improved 720S, but in reality, many thought that McLaren had gone just a step too far in their pursuit of speed. Now, we have the 750S, which, whether McLaren will admit this or not, needs to right those wrongs. Luckily for me, I'm on the racetrack, so let's talk about it. Of course, that beautiful, sonorous noise you can hear behind me is that mega twin turbocharged V8. Four litres, 740 horsepower. Wow, these brakes. 590 pound feet of torque. Let's open it up. Holy mackerel. Gear shifts are so aggressive. Wow, and that air brake. The brakes on their own do an amazing job. But the fact that that wing cantilevers up, giving you all that incredible downforce, is not only epic to think about, but it's epic to see in your rear view mirror, I have to be honest. Wow. I mean, this thing lives to be north of 100 miles per hour. Gosh, do McLaren make the best sounding V8 still in existence? The grip, the grip. It's different to the Porsche. It's different to the Ferrari. There's less drama about it. A lot of drama in the shifts, a lot of drama in the braking, but in terms of the body roll, the way that the car acts in the corners, there's less. And I think I know why. It's because this McLaren has the third generation of the proactive chassis control, PCC3. Of course, you've got fully adaptive dampers, shocks, electronic anti-roll. You can feel the car working beneath you. Gosh. Like that, nothing, like it's nothing. This car ain't going nowhere. It's nimble, it's light, but it feels planted, it doesn't feel unsettled, it feels like it's at one with the asphalt. It's not dancing on top of it, it's cutting through it. This seat is great. The seat is like the best seat here, I think. And I love these great big wide. Shoulder holders. Is that a technical term? I don't think so. Chassis feel, body roll, suspension, steering turning, braking, power delivery. And I've got to say, <laughs> across those disciplines, McLaren is kind of hard to beat. McLaren is, you know, every bit the lethal track weapon you'd imagine. The superpower of the old 720S was that it was as at home on the street as it was at the racetrack. And the exact same can be said about this 750. With its adjustable ride and that trick suspension and chassis control, you can dial the McLaren's ride to your liking and drive hundreds of miles in a single sitting. Still, it's on the track where the 750S thrives. I've not driven a more comprehensive track attack car than this. The steering is incredible. The direction change, nothing short of instantaneous. The 
front end is so darty that you feel like you're on the front axle, and to be fair, you practically are. The engine is sumptuous, the exhaust note gets in your chest and refuses to leave even long after you finish driving it. And the shotgun-like gear changes are addictive. The 750S will have you reaching for gear after gear after gear, achieving uncomfortable speeds in unfathomable times again and again. The 750S is practically perfect. Bloody hell. Come on, England. Oh, it's so good. Really nice, McLaren.